welcome to the sixth session of the tutorial in this session we are going to achieve something like this so in the last video we have covered how to delete this user in this video we are going to cover how we can edit this user so when the, we will click on the edit button we will get uh, all the data from the database and uh, we can make changes into it so suppose i'm making it uh, 50 and when we click on update this data will be updated in the database so when we go and check the age is updated to 50 now also we are going to implement this login so when uh, we put any wrong user id or password and when we click on login we will get this invalid username or password and if we are putting the correct username and password and click on login it will navigate to a new page so this page will look like this so let's start with our session let's go to our JSP page and uh, last time we implemented this delete user so here only we want to implement this edit user href equals to edit user question mark id equals in the span the class name we will give bootstrap components so go to components and here this class we will use just copy this and paste it and we will close this so let's go back and check what we have got then we go to all user we have got this edit button when we click on edit button so it is selecting the id and we have to delete this id so we have to make some changes in our application controller now uh, let's give a method here and let's give a mapping to it so this mapping name and in the jsp page this mapping name should be name this method will accept a parameter int parameter from the user also give so when the user will click this edit user it will take us to the mode update now let's work with this mode update so in here In here let's use our previous code let's use this mode register and let's paste it at the last so this mode register let's make it to mode update and here the heading should be update user here the action performed is save user this save user is already defined in our application controller so it will perform the same action so here what all things need to be changed everything will be same here this register let's change it to update run our program and see what's happening so when i click on edit button it is going to update user let's click on update button so when we click on this edit user button it is performing the save action the data we are sending that is getting saved so that is creating a new user and this is a blank user but we want to edit it so for editing it we need to have a method we have a method in the, our third repository this method is 
let's find one so this find id returns whether the entity with the given id exists so let's go back in our user service and let's uh, define a method public void int id and let's call our user repository dot find find one now let's go back to our application controller and in here we need to fetch the data from the database and display it into our JSP page so let's uh, do that request set attribute and we will call our user service here dot edit user in the user service this return type should be user and we will return this in the application controller now it is fine so now let's run our application and when we click on this edit button so it is fetching the data let's take the name of some of the people from my channel Abhat Kumar and let's update it let's go back here and we can see this name id the user is updated let's go back and check in our database refresh and we can see the name has came here let's add one more person Sachin Taku let's go to new registration let's register go to all user and we can see this and suppose we want to edit this so we can go here and we can see this name is picked we can change the age was 27 and when we click on update the user is updated now let's go and implement our login so when the user will click login it should go to login page let's define a method in the application controller to show our login page Again, let's return welcome page. Let's run it. So when we click on login, we need to have this username and password built in here. Let's reuse some of our code. Same mode login. Here we can provide some action login user. This is the username field. Let's use the password field as well. Let's have a login button. Here let's change the header user login and the button name is login so when we hit on this login button action will be performed so we need to define this action in our application controller but before that let's uh, display this login page first http servlet request mode mode login let's run our program so now let's work with this login user let's go to our application controller and create a method public string login user and this will take model attribute let's say like when the login is successful return home page let's give a request mapping login user 
so this login user will take two parameters the username and the password and let's go to our user repository and let's define a method here public user find by username and password string username string password use the same method in our service user service return let's go to our application controller let's provide the implementation if user service here we need to pass user dot get username user dot get password is not equals to null that time it will return home page else request dot set attribute let's say error and the error message invalid username or password after that if it is invalid username and password display the same login phase again return welcome page now let's have a jsp page with this name home page in the view let's have a jsp page file name should be home page now let's use the same format whatever we have used in welcome page go to the top copy everything till here go to our home page and paste it also we need to have this closing tags So when the login will be successful this home page will be displayed let's go and check our application now so when we type something wrong let's see what happens okay so here you can see validation failed for the object user okay one more thing we need to make sure here that we are using here in the mode login this input type hidden this line should not be used it is used for hiding the data so that tag we should remove now let's go back and again check we have provided a wrong username and password that's why it is displaying this user login page but we should get this error here like invalid username or password so for that so we have to go to our JSP page and here before the username we should display error message so that we need to use just tl tag if not empty error classic was to alert alert danger so it will come in red color this danger alert will be in double quotes we need to have this value the out and that should be in the application controller we have this error and error passes so should keep this error that's it now let's run our application once again wrong user and password here it is not coming inside 
div tag we need to close it after see out let's try it again now it's coming in correct place now what happens when we give correct username and password let's take the user from database login it's saying like this home page is not found let's check why so that's because this home page is somewhere else where it went let's see it is here let's move it to here in the view let's run it again then when we log in we get this home page in this home page we want to display few things here for that we need to go to our welcome page let's copy few of the things from here jumbotron We need to have some videos here. We want to have an alert bar here. Div class equals to alert alert success. So this alert success will be green in color. And inside I want to have a heading. Let's say H4 and heading should be lesson one spring boot spring boot tutorial let's see what's the change and you can see we have got a green tag first of all we need to have all these things in a container first so let's define a container if class equals to container and we want to keep it text centered let's refresh it so you can see the size is same as the jumbotron size that's because we have kept this in a container uh, let's go to add one video spring boot tutorial video one let's go to my channel and here i want to use this video itself i have a share option we have embed option here when we click on embed it will give a link to copy so copy it let's go back and paste it in our container This is the size of the video to be displayed. Let's make it 400. Height to be 200. So we got this video here. The same video. If we want, we can provide any paragraph, and we can type anything. Close the paragraph. You can have this as many times as you want. So when we go and refresh it, so you can see now. So that's it from this session. And in the next session, we will be applying some of the validation features and some of the security features in the upcoming videos. So guys, be updated. And thank you for watching my videos.